I know it says it's about to start, or it's really starting, but I don't know. It's not really starting. We have a couple minutes. I just didn't like all that dead silence. Oh, look, there's another dead silence pause. That was just a little extra bonus. You still there? What would you like me to sing? I pretty much don't know any song that was recorded after 1999. Give me something that's recorded prior to 2000. I don't know that. Some prints? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to go to that party. I saw the gin blossoms when uh, when the ball fell in 2000. You? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the clock didn't shut the whole computer down. That's funny. So can everybody hear us? There's a little question thing. Is that it? No. Chats or questions? It doesn't matter, I guess. One or the other. Can you hear Darren? Can you hear I? Tainted Love. Oh, I might be able to sing that one. Now I just got to remember what that sounds like. Tainted Love. No, I, oh, I got to look it up now. <laughs> Is that what that's in? I, there's no chance I can remember the first word of that song. That's a game show right there. Name the first word of this song. All right, so hold on. I gotta, I gotta think through this tainted love thing. Everybody. Well, that's not too bad there. Yeah, I don't remember it. <laughs> Coming up with that. All right, maybe next week I'll sing a, a ditty. This is a little ditty about Jack and Diane. No, I can't actually sing. That would really that would drive people away. I'll leave that for Paul. We'll let Paul come in with like the national anthem next week. What time is it? Did we? Is it on time? Should we start? Or are we wasting people's lives? It's 7 o'clock according to Verizon. What does your clock say? Oh, it's 8 o'clock according to Verizon. They should really get their act together. I'm pretty sure it's one or the other. All right, so this is night two in our Keywords, Keywords, Keywords series. Last week we talked about, we really spent a bunch of time talking about it. The concept of search engine optimization and the role of keywords. Um, tonight, we're going to spend time talking about where can we find keywords. Now, I don't really want to spend much time talking about Market Samurai or Word Tracker or Brainstorm tools because, I mean, what's the point of that? We would be done right now. I could just tell you that's where you go find them. And there are several videos in Free Weekly Mastermind where we actually show you how to go into brainstorm tools, search for something, and then look at the supply, you know, and the demand, you know, and the index that shows you which are the most profitable keywords. So that part, that part is what it is. What I want to talk about is other strategies to find keywords, um, to find what people are searching for, to, you know, specifically, I mean, the goal here is, you know, we're in business. So specifically, how do we figure out what it is people are willing to trade money for, what it is they're trading money for now, what it is they value, what they 
what do they want to watch? What do they want to do? What do they want to read? Because ultimately, that's what we want to provide. Now, we definitely want to provide information that our audience needs but doesn't know they need. And that's hard to find because most of the time people are searching for, you know, the, the big issues. But sometimes there are things that you really need to know but the information just really isn't present. So tonight we're going to figure out what is it people want to know. How do we figure that out? Um, and we're going to stay away from keyword tools as much as possible because there's so many other ways. All right. So let's see here. If I click right there, it will go to the next screen. Woohoo! All right. So we're going to learn what keywords can tell us about certain things. For instance, what is a commercial and a non-commercial keyword? We're going to figure out where our, where our audience is and what they're buying. We're going to figure out when is the best time to put our keywords in front of our audience. Basically, when is the best time to sell to our audience? When is the best time they want what we have? And then how do we actually get what we're giving them to them? So these are the things that we're, I guess, what we're going to go over tonight. So first of all, people are searching for solutions to problems. Like Mark Hendricks always says, people don't want drill bits. They want holes. And that's as true as it can get. When I go to the hardware store, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm surely searching for a drill bit, but I could care less about the drill bit if, if there was another way to put a hole in the wall or in the wood or whatever we're doing. So solutions is what we're trying to figure out. Uh, keywords can tell us what people are already buying, um, what information is actually making them smarter, which makes them stick around, increases your page views. Uh, for those of you with impression networks, that's important, and drives people to community. So, you know, this is this is very simple. We're starting out simple. We're going more interesting. How can we find out what it is people want to know? What things are they searching for? What questions are they asking? Uh, what are the words they're using in these questions? How are they wording their questions? Now, for one thing, some people put together frequently asked questions pages on their site that are just unbelievably ridiculous. They're not frequently asked questions at all. And you can prove that to yourself. Because if you go to some place like Wiki Answers, here's, here's all kinds of questions about raw food. I mean, these are the frequently asked questions. And some of these happen two, three times. You can see the same question over and over. And you can find these questions other places. So the question is for you, how does this help you with your site? How can we turn these kinds of questions into content? Can we answer the questions directly on Wiki Answers with a link back to our site? That's like a, you know, a little extra little benefit you could do there. But where is that little thing? You can go to Yahoo Answers, which is basically the same thing. And you could even search for what you're looking for on Twitter or in forums or Facebook groups. But ultimately, what is it that people are looking for? So now I looked down this list, and I see that I see the word cook with raw food several times. So I'm going to write that down for myself. And I'm going to go to my keyword tool. Not only am I going to search for raw food, but I'm going to search for the word cook in raw food. What are all the things people are looking for that have to do with cooking. Um, we see raw eggs. I mean, we see in, in this this one right below the blue, we see the word raw and the word food, because that's what I search for. But what food can you make with raw eggs? So that branches out a little bit from my raw food concept. Now it's, what do I do with the raw food, not what is raw food? So here's a place that you can find what people are looking for. This is a content generator. Another place, another great place to find out what people are buying and ultimately, uh, you know, what they're spending money for and what keywords they're actually buying. Because if you think about this, if you buy a book on Amazon that nobody referred you to or you were searching for a book on raw food and you picked a book, really the only thing you have to go on is the title. And maybe if you do that little open book thing, you can see the table of contents. But the title is the, is the draw. The title is the keywords. What is it? people are drawn to? What are the top selling books in any particular niche? If you take away the celebrity author and you look for the other ones, the ones that don't look like they have some sort of other impetus of sales, what are people driving themselves to? Now Amazon, for example, 
I searched for this book right here. I searched for raw food and I clicked on this raw food book. And then if you if you scroll down the page on Amazon, go pa almost past the reviews, you get to this product details section. I'm not sure if you've seen this section before. But in this section on the bottom where it says Amazon best, best sellers rank, we can now go find the best seller in the healthy special diet cooking food and wine section. We can see what all the what they're all called, raw food made easy. We can figure out what the best selling book is in vegetables and vegetarians or in diets. Because when you click on these, it's going to take you to the list of the books in that category sorted by order of sales. So this particular book is number 17 in this section. So what is number one? Let's click on that and go find out. And then if you go to the bottom of the page, you can actually find out use what Amazon's algorithm shows as other things that people would buy in this particular area. So not only do we have a content generator when we're looking for keywords, raw food made easy, I mean that would probably be a good blog post, um, but now we're looking for other things that would go along with raw food that we could sell, you know, as an affiliate that we could promote, that we could talk about. Um, like this was Xylus, is that what that is, a spiral slicer right there? No, that's not something I necessarily would have thought of immediately thinking of raw food, but as soon as I see it, I instantly think, oh yes, I should probably go for the slicers on my blog. I should look for those keywords. I should do reviews on these kinds of things because my raw food community is probably going to buy some of these to perpetuate their raw food habit. Another place, magazines. You know, magazine covers are designed to sell. The only thing that you can sell on the cover is words. So what are the words on the magazines in your niche? I mean, take a morning, go to Barnes & Noble, go through all the magazines in your niche and just see what is it that they're selling. Learn the art of, of winemaking. Now, if you go to men's fitness, you're going to see abs on every single magazine, every one. Now, there's got to be a reason that they put abs on the, for, on the cover. If you are in the fitness industry and you don't have abs in the sidebar, are you denying their research that abs is selling magazines? Or what is it your thought? Why are you being contrary? What makes you think your people don't want abs when somebody like Men's Fitness is selling them left and right? So I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying, you know, talk that through with yourself. Figure out why are you not doing that? Why is it that their research isn't good enough for you? And what do you know that they don't that makes you smarter? Because you might have it right. So where can we find out keywords that are actually working, that are actually producing results? Now, one way to do that is easy in articles. If you go to easyinarticles.com or you search, you know, site colon HTTP easyinarticles.com and then put a space and then put your niche keyword, so you know, Zen Garden or Chi or, you know, whatever it is, you are going to find every article in Easy in Articles that is written about that particular topic. Now at the very bottom of each of those articles, if you scroll down, is the number of times that article has been viewed. Now since Easy in Articles is largely organic search based, I mean, there's not a lot of people that are driving traffic there, the ones that are found and the ones that have the highest views are probably the keywords that seem to be working. So take a look at those articles. What are they talking about? If that article is being found on the internet often, then you know that's a keyword you probably want to go after. That's something people are looking for. Um, YouTube videos as well. Search YouTube for your niche topics and then sort by the most viewed videos. Now, to some degree, YouTube changes the algorithm a bit. They'll they'll just start showing stuff because people are watching it. But the fact is, people are watching it. So what does that mean for you? Now let's take a look at the Wayback Machine. If you haven't used that before, the Wayback Machine. I think it's waybackmachine.org. I actually took a URL from the best sellers in natural foods from Amazon and I stuck it in the Wayback Machine and I picked two dates. I picked 2008 and 2011. And it brought back the page what it looked like back in 2008. This is what the page actually looked like. And if you look at this right here, this number two, Green Smoothie Revolution by Victoria, whatever that is. It's number two. Now look at this. August of 2011, this is what the page looked like. Still number two, Green Smoothie Revolution. So 
if you're in the smoothie business, are we writing a review on this book to capture some of that traffic? Or are we talking about green smoothies? Is green something in the smoothie world that you really need to be focused on? And does that mean that you should branch your keywords beyond smoothie to the benefits of kale and avocados and all the other things that you put into a green smoothie? Should you go there? This is the kind of information that will lead you there that you will not get when you just put smoothie into a keyword tool. You just won't be able to make that kind of connection. But the fact that this book is number two in 2008, number two now, or in 2011, and I believe it was in the top five now, I mean, that, that's got some sticking power. I mean, that's, that's a value to you. That's good knowledge. So people also like information that makes them smarter. So like I said before, number three is easy in articles, figuring out the number of views. Um, if you search for the word infographics on, on Google or anywhere really, on Pinterest for that matter, and you put in your, uh, your niche name after that, you are going to find lots of infographics about the thing that you talk about. I just put gardening in for this one and I grabbed three. Now from this, you can get all kinds of keyword thoughts, all kinds of content out the ideas. I mean, whoever put these together is trying to put together information that is interesting and relevant to that market. So they spent however many hours putting this together. Can you piggyback on that? Can you see what is it they're talking about? Like, the, like here on the bottom, economics of U.S. food gardens, U.S. households with food gardens. I mean, this is kind of demographic based, but do these give you ideas of things that would be interesting to talk about? And can you just go ahead and embed this kind of an infographic right into your site given Mr. Uh, Chris Rooney, uh, you know, some a tip off that he put it together. And Russell McClendon at MNN, National Gardening Association. Here's another infographic and even another. Does this not only give you content ideas, keyword ideas, but also design ideas, kinds of things that you, colors, the way you put stuff together. I mean, this is good research to do in your niche. This is the kind of stuff that you would have a VA do and present to you. I mean, do all kinds of research and bring it back to you. That saves you hours of time of collecting. Now you just have to figure out what you got. So when we're talking about keywords, like I said before, we're, we're obviously talking about how is it that we turn our writing career, our blog, how do we turn our, our investment, how do we turn our time into money? So to some degree, when we're looking for keywords, we're looking for keywords that will bring people to help solve problems because when we are a problem solver, we are helping someone move up their ladder of value towards the next level of happiness or joy or whatever it is they're headed. You know, when you solve someone's problem, they're happy and thankful. So when we're thinking about problems, thinking about the kinds of things that people buy. So how is it that we take keywords and then we evolve that to what people buy? And now that's some of that is the difference between the commercial keyword and non-commercial keyword. For instance, Mitsubishi Diamante 2008 green, you know, is a lot more commercial than the word car. If somebody's searching for a green Mitsubishi Diamante, uh, they are farther down the path of purchasing, if in fact they're on that path and not just looking for a picture, than the other guy who's looking for the word car, who's nowhere near purchasing, not even close. So combing through your keywords to determine whether or not they have commercial value or not is useful to you. Now, you do that by, by kind of using your own mental filter, but filter that against the kinds of things that people buy. Consumables are things people buy over and over and over. Now, you know, if, if you have a blog or, or, or a site or a niche site where you are product-based or coupon-based or, um, you know, something that people need all the time like diapers, then you know if you can capture that traffic, you can bring them back again and again and again, partially because you are contacting them, but partially because consumables are purchased over and over and over. So can they want to come back, and you're bringing them back. It's a you know, double whammy. Um, so look for those kinds of things within your keyword set. Some of those are hard to rank for. So we rank for some of the easier keywords, and we drive people to our to our whatever, what did I just say, commercial intent keywords. Um, collectibles are obviously things that people buy. Uh, toll booth is something people don't always think about. Um, like a membership site can often be a toll booth to information. 
um, you know, you join this and you'll be able to learn X, Y, and Z. And then there's always the back on add on value improvement things. One of those might be the Xylus slicer. When somebody comes to your site and gets all kinds of information or joins your recipe club um, for your raw food, can an upsell be that Xylus slicer? And did we find out about that through Amazon? <coughs> I'm going to take a drink. This is what it sounds like. Yep, that was the sound of precious water. So here's kind of some of the ways that we can we can call our traffic together and let the traffic itself produce keywords. Now, for instance, I haven't looked yet, but and I'm sorry if I haven't looked yet. <coughs> but if there are questions being asked during this webinar, if there are questions being asked during your webinar, those questions can be cultivated into emails, into blog posts. Those are real, I mean, those are real questions people have. Those are real stumbling blocks if you're selling a product. Um, those are real ways for you to gauge what your audience wants, where they are in the process of what you're teaching them, so that you can continue to teach them after. So, you know, if somebody in here, I haven't looked yet, but if somebody asks me what the Wayback Machine is, you know, that is information that I can put on the site when I'm, and I can write an entire post about what is the Wayback Machine and how do you use it and drive people to, to us, you know, to a talk like this recorded. That would be of value, especially, I mean, if somebody asks that, if nobody asks it and it's obvious, I probably will ignore it. But look inside your forums, look inside other people's forums. What are the questions being asked? What are the topic ideas? What are people talking about over and over and over? What string of of talk of talk is longer than all the rest and why is that what is it that people are interested in don't just go to there to, to talk go there to learn so these are some other ways that you can bring people together in affinity groups and find out you know more about them what they want go after them go after these kinds of things and figure out you know what are they talking about you know classes for instance just looking at a class curriculum that's a great way like on uh, slideshare.net you can find class curriculums uh, in PowerPoint and see all the subjects covered in that class. Great way to figure out, you know, more keywords in your niche. So now that we've got some keywords, we know what people want, we know what kinds of questions they want, and we know what problems they have. We understand more about the direction they're going, what books they're buying to solve problems. We can take those keywords and turn them into content. And we can turn that content into products, into things that you can sell. And using keyword research this way, for instance, that raw food made easy, Amazon has proven to us that raw food made easy is a seller. I mean, it's, it's selling. Or maybe that was the number 17, wasn't it? It was the green smoothie one. So green smoothie revolution, that concept, you know, we it's already proven that people are buying it, and they've been buying it for several years. So we don't really have to guess will people buy it we know they're buying it they're, they're buying it everywhere else we just have to provide the same level of value that 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 book or that product is and we can do that in several different ways I mean we could talk about green smoothies in a webinar all night we could do a live video chat where we make them you know that can be a product people pay to come to um, you can turn them into service products um, you could have a physical book you know those are all kinds of things that you can do once you understand the problems, what solves the problems, who's looking for them, and, and how you're going to stand between somebody and joy and happiness. Oh, here's some more. wonder why I made that two pages. I could have made that one. That would have been more efficient. So here's some more. In case you don't know this, um, Kunaki up here. Kunaki is a fantastic service. Whoops. I went, I went ahead. So here's something cool about Kunaki, just as a side note. Um, Kunaki is a uh, distribution center, and they distribute CDs and DVDs, I think a few other things, for people like us. So we put together this webinar right now. I can record it, put it on a DVD. I can email it to them. I can actually email them artwork or go on their site and create artwork for the DVD cover. They will charge me 2 3 $4 for the DVD. I sell it for seven, eight, nine, ten on my site. 
and then when they click through and buy it, it gets mailed directly from Kunaki. I don't have to deal with it ever. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, that was just a side note. So here's some information products. I'm not sure you've thought about this in terms of, you know, now that we have keywords, now that we have topics, now that we have content, how are we delivering it? Um, this is just kind of a simple list of ways to deliver it. I would never deliver by a newsletter anymore. I think you need to wait like five years until everyone else has given up on the concept newsletter and go with something else. Even bulletin sounds more targeted than newsletter these days. Oh, and they use some service products too. No, I think I say in the next one that, here we go, that no matter what you do, if you have a product, you should create a service to support it. And then, uh, you know, vice versa. If you have a service, you should create a product. And if you have a both, you create additional products that add functionality like software, plugins, mobile apps, those kinds of things. And that came straight from Cindy Dawson at the very first NAMS that I attended long, long, long ago. So, let me, Darren, do we have questions? Did you mute yourself? Yes. I, I think it's just the link from, it's really just the information pass that goes from uh, your site to Kanaki that actually creates the distribution event. So the sales. Yeah. So, whatever, you know, have whatever kind of sales page you want. So then, one thing that you can't tell from keywords is when you can sell something. I think it takes, it really takes effort to figure it out. Now, these two examples are just ridiculous. Eight-year-olds aren't ready for shaving kits. And, I mean, some people have that Christmas in July sale, but really, you're not putting... Christmas ornaments by uh, by the checkout line at Kroger in July. It just doesn't work. It's not logical. But there are ways to figure out when you can sell something. Now, this eight-year-old's idea isn't ready for shaving kits. That has absolutely nothing to do with the calendar. You know, we, we put together the marketing calendar blueprint, and uh, we talk a little bit about this, about understanding the ladder of value of your customer. And for eight-year-olds, for eight-year-old boys anyway, Shaving kits is not on that ladder yet. They're not quite there. You know, they don't even have peach fuzz. So there are ways we can figure out, besides our own thought, when we can sell things and when we can't, when we should be using our keywords and when we shouldn't. Um, so first of all, Google Trends. Google Trends is fantastic. Google.com slash trends. Here I just put in cabbage, pumpkins, and wheat because I understand the, the search for each one of them. So here's the, the search term, cabbage. Cabbage is in blue. Cabbage is largely searched around what is it, what holiday is this? Yep, you guessed it, Christmas. No, I'm just kidding. It's St. Patrick's Day. So big search around St. Patrick's Day. And then we go over here with red, pumpkins. What holiday is this? Clearly that's Arbor Day. Everyone has pumpkins on Arbor Day. And then... Right in the middle, which has absolutely no seasonality to it whatsoever, is wheat. So from a keyword standpoint, are we going to be talking about cabbage if we have a apparently a food site uh, in November, or are we going to talk, be talking about it on the front page near St. Patrick's Day? This is the kind of when are we going to use these keywords? What I mean, how are we going to use these tools to figure out what we're doing with them? Uh, and Google Trends is a great way to figure out even you know, the course of the year, your marketing calendar of what you're talking about and when. So if you don't have marketing calendar blueprint yet, I would encourage you to check it out. We talk about that. I mean, that's just one-tenth of all the things we talk about in there. So then what's hip? There's all kinds of trends magazines for everything from human resource management to, you know, what Beyonce is wearing. Keeping up with those kinds of things means you're keeping up with your audience. Unless you're the one dictating what your audience likes, which, you know, 
you can. I think Vaynerchuk is almost to that point where he's kind of dictating what wines people are drinking, kind of like Oprah did with her book club. She decided that this book was important in you know this month, not the trend. So until you're at that point, make sure that you're following exactly where your audience is because you know they're everywhere too. They're not just on your site. They're on all sites. Now, tutors and the eight-year-old are, are very similar. They don't follow the calendar path in terms of July, August, September. Now, obviously, eight-year-old boys aren't ready for razors or a shaving kit. That's a logical human physiology thing. But now, if you think about, you know, if you're in the tutoring niche, if you're in the child education niche and you're going through these keywords and you're finding out that, you know, people are asking questions about, you know, how do they help their kid with reading or with math, you know, and you're, you're seeing those kinds of keywords on Wiki Answers, you're seeing those kinds of books, you know, you're, you're seeing this is what people are searching for. Now you still have to do one more piece of the puzzle, and that is figure out at what point in the process, if I am a tutor, do I need those keywords to show up? Do I need those questions to be, re to be relevant to my audience? And what is the tone of that? And I'll give you an example of that. So I don't know if you know this, but when your child has a problem at school, let's just say with reading, um, the teacher generally alerts the parent that the child is behind in reading. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the time that comes at the parent-teacher meeting, which is, you know, three months after they noticed it the first time, which is sad, but it is what it is. So the teacher, you know, explains the students having problems, and the, the, the parent does not go home and call a tutor. So if you're finding out that, you know, the keywords are, what are you supposed to do when your teacher says, you know, your kid's having reading problems, this is not the place to put the sales pitch for the tutoring because the, the parent's not ready. The parent does not go home and talk about tutors. The parent goes home and talks with the husband or calls her mom or you know, whatever it is. Um, and they talk about how do we help the kid? Do we ask the, the teacher to stay after school? Do we ask the teacher to see if there's a special resource class the student can be with? Is there an extra person at the school who will help with reading? Or do we read with the, the child at night to help them ourselves? Those are kind of like the first steps. Now, we know what the keywords are. We just have to know when we can use them. So, so that's the first steps. Now, a few months later, you know, after this has taken course, again, the, the parent and the teacher meet. And sometimes the teacher will say, you know, that has really worked out great. Other times, the teacher will say, well, you know what, we're not making any progress with the reading. So then you go to the next level. The parent's still not ready for the uh, tutor yet. They're just not there. So the parent then goes on to, okay, now we're going to take away the iPod you know, after school or the Xbox until we get done with you know, doing our homework, and we're going to do extra homework at night. Like, you know, like an extra level of strictness comes next. It isn't until the teacher says a few times that the efforts that have been going into it have not been working but the parent considers they need extra time. They need someone else to come in and help. They're not prepared for this. That is when you take the keywords that you learned and you start selling the tutoring services. And you use the same keywords, but the tone is different. The desperation that you need to mimic with the parent. The acknowledgement that, in fact, I understand that you took away the Xbox already. I understand that you had, you know, you spent extra time with the teacher. I understand that he has a special resource teacher already. I understand you're studying with that, you know, with your student at night, but it's still not working and you're ready for a tutor. That's where we step in. So when I'm talking about timing is often the key, you have to understand your customer's ladder of value, their, their process, not only just the keywords themselves, but where do they fit? When is the person ready for what you're, what you're, you know, what you're providing? Oh, there's Google Trends again. Just thought you'd like those colors. So the next steps are after you, I mean, the next step after like this call is to figure out what your audience is already buying. Go to Amazon, go to Cafe Press, go to YouTube, not that you can buy anything there, go to iTunes, um, look at the podcasts, like thoroughly research your niche, everything, whether that's extreme couponing or gardening or Zen gardens, it doesn't matter. Um, and then, now that you know what they're buying, 
compare that to the questions they're asking at Wiki Answers and Yahoo Answers. Figure out what it, where is the lineal match between the two. What kinds of questions are people leading where you see the things they're buying as the answers to those questions. Go to your competitor sites. Figure out what they're selling. Figure out what they you know what what they're featuring. You can't really tell what they're selling. Um, suppose that you know that book, The Green Smoothie Revolution. If you if we know that's selling really really well, and we are a smoothie site, why would we not create our own green smoothie book? You know, create your own product, and then make sure that when you're doing all these steps, that what you're doing with your keywords, what you're doing with your content, matches where your audience is at. You just can't do plain old keyword research. You really have to go a little bit, you know, a couple steps further than just knowing the words it is. It's really what's the meaning behind those words. Whoa! Did you know that was coming? I didn't know that was coming. I thought I had two more left. I did. All right, so... Let me go through these questions. So feel free to ask ask questions because now we're in that period. Considering I got to this really really fancy last slide. Yeah, and you can, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but if if you go into your Google Analytics and you go uh, into your admin section, you can click a box on the bottom that says, I do want to track site search. Why it's there, I don't know, but you actually have to, you have to tell Google Analytics you want to track it. That way you can see anytime someone uses the search box on your site what they're searching for. That is a useful tool. You know, we talk about that in Marketing Calendar Blueprint a little bit in terms of pulling up your analytics and looking at your last year going month by month, like actually setting the the dates. So you're searching January 1st to January 31st, and you're writing down, you know, what were the most searched keywords that month. The same thing, you know, then you do February 1st to the 28th, and you're writing down the keywords, and you're building for yourself a timeline of you know what are people looking for that are finding me throughout the year how do I mimic that this year how do I take advantage of knowing that's what the timing is like so yeah I, I think Google Analytics is another great place to mine for keywords that you didn't you didn't really weren't thinking about <clears throat> you know the problem with Google Analytics is that it mimics I mean it is a reflection of what you wrote so if you have a smoothie site and you write all about smoothies, but you've never really mentioned cantaloupe, then cantaloupe will not show up in your Google Analytics. Like if it's if it's that word's not on your site, then people aren't going to find you with that word. So if you limit yourself to Google Analytics about you know trying to use it to figure out what people want, you limit yourself to knowing what people want of what you've already offered them. So you have to know that there's probably some really big terms out there that people are searching for that aren't on my site so I don't even know about them for instance you know there's a lot of people who talk about uh, Walgreens you know the deals you can get and all that kind of stuff and Walgreens pharmacy is like the number one search thing people want pharmacy coupons and they search for Walgreens pharmacy coupons because they're looking for Advil and all that other stuff they don't just do Walgreens Advil coupon and a lot of the you know, a lot, a lot of people don't even consider the word pharmacy in there. They just don't use it. So they miss out on a good section of traffic that they, they could have if they had done a little bit more keyword research.
Oh, so Cafe Press is um, is a place where you load up. Uh, like if you have a logo, you can put a logo on your shirt, on your on your mug, or whatever. Um, but just like Amazon, it has the stats of the you know the the most purchased topics that have you know use the word Bieber or that say gardening or whatever it is. So you can go in there and see on Cafe Press, um, you know the top sold things in in those different markets. And yeah, I think there's actually if you if you Google it, I think you can Google a, a Cafe Press bestseller list. I think that might even be the name of it. So then Kelly asked um, in Google Analytics when you're actually going to track that site search, what you do when you go to that box. One of the questions it asks you is the query print parameter. And the way that you figure out your query parameter, even though this is kind of a side note, is uh, you go to your site and you search for, you know what, let's just do it. How do I do that? How do I make that go away? Go away. I got all these uh, webinar buttons all over the place. So let's go to uh, Kansas City Mamas com. Let's just make sure here. So we have to find the the search box. There it is. Doesn't matter where the search box is on your site. So then we want to want to search for uh, gophers because you know everyone does. And then after you press search. Oh, Kelly, I was wrong on your site. Here's what you wanted to go do. Here's your query parameter. It's up here in this string. So you have KansasCityMamas.com slash search slash question mark, and here is your query parameter, CX. Now, most WordPress sites, it's S. Why yours is CX, I do not know, but you have to put CX in that box. Other people have just the letter S right there, S for search. So that's how you figure that out, if that's helpful. Sorry to steer you the wrong way originally. I've not seen a CX very often. Let me try. I'm going to try a different one. So we have Swedish. Oh, hers is CX2. That's interesting. All right, let's try uh, Lynn Terry's. Does she have a search box? She does. So let's go with Sniffles. There you go. There's the S. That's what most of them say. And it appears that Lynn Terry rarely or never talks about Sniffles. Yeah, you would think that she would talk about sniffles all the time. Size does matter. You know, but but it, it sort of does and it sort of doesn't. You know that, that page Squidoo? How would you describe that site? I don't even know how to describe it. So this particular site, and that, you know, this is one of the most viewed sites on the on the web all the time. And these people, these people pick very very narrow niches, and some of them do extremely well, um, like West African vegetable stew. Now, whether this person has an entire website dedicated to this. Or just this, I do not know. Um, but this could be it. I mean, the size of your niche doesn't have to be, you know, a hundred thousand pages. But it's possible that that she's the number one search for West African vegetarian vegetable stew. Stew. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if she was number one at all. And then she makes money here, and you can tell on in her case, she has ninety-eight other. Squidoo lenses, pages, for all different stuff. 
Now, if you think a niche is too small, then but it has good. I mean, it has some search to it, and you know, you see some profitability. I wouldn't just deny it. I, I would consider what are my other options besides a you know a giant site. Why not something like a Squidoo lens? Look at all these things. Best Thomas Kincaid puzzles. So she, Mary Camouflage Christmas. Yeah, then it's possible this is the extent of your niche, this page. And it might, you know. Oh, I totally forgot about the dummies philosophy. You can go, there's dummies guides for all kinds of stuff. You can go and look at the uh, table of contents to see what people are writing about in that area. And that's another great way to find content ideas. I'm glad you brought that up. Totally forgot about that. Man, I haven't done that for a couple of our things. Shame on me. This is an interesting uh, squidoo lens right here. Camouflage and Christmas lights. Camo Santa hats. And that's the Amazon. Huh. All kinds of stuff out there, for sure. All right, sorry, I got lost there. What else do we have? Sweet. That means that this is either useless or we covered it quite adequately. <laughs> That's my thought on it. <laughs> like, I have nothing to ask about this topic. So, was that useful? Oh, next week we're going to start talking about SEO from the inside. We're going to talk about the factors that you do on site to improve your search engine optimization. And in the week after that, we're going to talk about SEO from the outside. What things do you do outside of your site to improve your SEO? And I'll tell you right now that the stuff from the inside is a lot more important than the outside. Not that I don't want you to come in the last week of the month, but it's a lot more important. So was that useful tonight? Were there follow-up things? Was it everything you wished for? Or were you thinking it was going to be something else? What, what else do we have in here that would... Help me figure that out. Oh yeah, we actually have um, how to put on a webinar webinar on Free Weekly Mastermind. So we actually go through the nuts and bolts of putting on a webinar like this, um, and that one's a pretty good one. And then. Um, yeah, I would like to do, we should do a, some February calls on products. How We do have how to get your uh, ebook on Kindle in Free Weekly Mastermind. We did that with yes. Daniel Hall. But it's uh, it's step by step. Yeah, that one's awesome. I mean, it's like, all right, so here's the next page on the form. You fill out this, and you fill out this, and you fill out this, but you don't fill out this because then he talks about how to price your ebook I and mean, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't think we've done any on uh, – we did membership sites, right? We got a whole call on that. Oh, microcontinuity is cool. I just keep thinking about uh, Paul's site. Paul's got, what, 30,000 members?
No, 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 no. It's thirty thousand at two ninety nine a month. It's microcontinuity. The same numbers. Yeah. Oh, and and yes, Kelly. If you bought Marketing Calendar Blueprint, we'll uh, take that off the premium price. No problem. Do we have a form for that, or are we just doing that manually? Oh, that's nice of you. That sounds very efficient. <laughs> You know, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> I just tag you. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. But yeah, those are good ideas, Kelly. We'll come up with some, maybe a couple of products calls. And maybe we'll do one where if you have a service, how do you add a product to that? That would be good too. So, all right, yeah. excellent. Well, I like keeping it under an hour. I do. I really like that. I think that's helpful and, it, you know, it doesn't take up your entire evening. You can get on with your lives. So we appreciate you coming. That's very nice of you. I'm glad you asked lots of questions. Um, like I said, next week we're doing SEO from the inside, and that is your that's more than your uh, your meta tags and descriptions. We're going to talk about internal structure, how to structure your site so that it's uh, Google likes it even more than people with incoming links. So. No. Yeah. See you guys next week.